Hey everybody, it is Dana and I am here with you today uh, to talk about skincare, all natural, do it yourself, at home, chemical free, hormone friendly skincare. Um, and the reason that I'm talking about skincare um, and the face and body oils that I like to use is because, you know, I'm in my 50s now, we're getting older, our skin, eh, you know, it takes a little bit more work to keep it looking really great, really plump, really fresh, really young, you know. Um, and there are so many great ways we can do that, but there are so many tempting products out there that have chemicals, ingredients in them, whether it's a fragrance or an artificial something or other, that is actually a known hormone disruptor. And if you are putting those on your skin every day, it can actually have a significant effect on your body's ability to balance your hormones naturally, which can make menopause and healthy aging a lot more difficult. And so that's why I like to share this. Plus it's just something that I do that it's fun. It's kind of a hobby of mine. So why the heck not? Um, so this week on the blog, I had a, oh, and if you don't know who I am, I'm Dana Lavoie. I, my main thing is I help women use customized herbal remedies for menopause relief and healthy aging after menopause, balancing hormones naturally. And those herbal remedies are going to work even better if you have a hormone friendly diet and lifestyle supporting them and not using skincare with hormone disrupting chemicals in it is part of that. Okay. So that's the backstory. Um, and then this week on the blog, I shared my sort of three step technique for moisturizing the skin, which involves exfoliation and then layering skincare products to moisturize the deep layers of the skin and then kind of seal the moisture in on the surface. So definitely go check out this week's blog. If you want to know more about the herbal remedies, just go to my website and get on my um, free, I have a free class that you can join that tells all about how I use herbs because it's really different from how most people do. But right now I want to jump into these juicy skincare oils. So here's the thing. There's a lot of different types of oil that you can use on your skin and some of them are better for some things and some are better for others so how do you know which one to choose okay so bottom line you can absolutely just grab something out of the kitchen coconut oil or olive oil put it on your skin when it's wet and it's going to moisturize your skin so it's not like you can go too wrong using anything really natural here but if you want to get even better results you can fine tune your choices or you could even make your own oil blends to get really more of the specific results that you're looking for so some of my favorite skincare oils now i have dry sensitive skin. Um, and so I'm going to talk about oils that work well for that, but also that would ones that would work more for, um, like an oilier skin or something like that. But for dry sensitive skin, one of my favorite oils is called camellia oil. Um, and it is really nice because it's really, really good. Like it's definitely, I would recommend it for people who have more dry skin, but one of the things about it is if you have dry skin or aging skin, it's a, it's a very rich moisturizing oil, but it also penetrates into the skin and absorbs really easily, which is really good because some of the more sort of like heavy, more deeply, you know, intense moisturizers can be like sticky or heavy or something, but camellia oil is a rich, rich moisturizer for dry or aging skin, but it penetrates easily and deeply into the skin. So it's known for replenishing lost moisture, stopping moisture loss. Um, it doesn't tend to evaporate. So it gives kind of like a long lasting moisturization. It contains vitamins A, vitamins B, vitamins D, vitamins E, as well as omegas three, six, and nine. Um, and here's another thing, the molecules, the oil molecules in the camellia oil are almost the same exact size as the sebum oils in our own skin. And this is the reason that it is so fast to absorb. It really kind of like works well with the skin. And it is also known as like the antioxidant oil. So it is reported to have more naturally occurring antioxidants than any other plant oil. And so this makes it really good for um, anti-aging and, you know, like aging spots or sun damage, but also really, really good for sensitive skin. So if you have dry, sensitive skin, or you're working on aging and you want something that's going to 
deeply give long lasting moisture but absorb quickly and easily you might want to think about camellia oil or even getting some camellia oil and mixing it in with whatever you're using if it's not in there it's that good especially if you have drier sensitive skin um, okay and you can absolutely put it on split ends as well uh, okay, so another one I wanted to talk about is Moringa oil. Um, and so this, again, is one that has known for sort of like aging skin, rejuvenating, tired, dull, dry skin. Again, it's rich in antioxidants, so it's going to help the skin fight free radical damage. So these oils that are high in antioxidants are really good for aging skin, for sun damage. Um, Moringa oil also contains cytokines, which help promote cell growth. So again, it's like revitalizing. And also it has vitamin C in it, which again has sort of a revitalizing um, and it has collagen. So it's going to minimize fine lines and wrinkle, wrinkles. And it also has anti-inflammatory and antiseptic qualities and it has this special thing in it that is uh, benic acid which is known to smooth the skin so it has just like so many benefits that it's definitely one you might want to consider having in your rotation or in your bl uh, blend hey wendy i will get to q a in just a minute as soon as i run through these uh, skincare oils okay so we have camellia oil and moringa oil good for sensitive skin for aging skin really really high in antioxidants and vitamins and uh, deeply moisturizing but both good for sensitive skin now i want to talk about one that is also really really so many benefits but i think of it as a much lighter oil so rose hip seed oil is one of my favorite oils it's known to be good for acne it's good for oilier skin it's very very light so I have dry sensitive skin. I like to use rosehip seed oil as a makeup primer, okay? Like before I put on makeup um, because it's not greasy and it just like kind of penetrates and disappears so quickly. It's just, it's like a lighter oil. It's not greasy, it's not heavy. And again, it's known to be good for acne. And it's also known to be good, really good for repairing the skin. So if you have damage from acne, but also damage from aging or sun damage it's really really good for that too it's loaded with vitamins and natural retinols so the retinols are going to help rejuvenate your skin and grow new skin cells and help your skin look repaired and younger but without any of the thinning or side effects that like an actual retinol could have so rose hip oil penetrates the skin very quickly it's not greasy it's not heavy it is an anti-aging powerhouse promoting really really kickstarting cell turnover promoting collagen so it's really really good for skin damage so post-operative scars acne scars sunburns skin burns very very healing it's filled with essential fatty acids vitamin c vitamin a which has that natural retinol and it is works wonders for smoothing out fine lines and improving skin tone and so that's why i really like to use it for um, like a midday pick me up something really light and not greasy a great oil for acne or oily skin but also for any kind of skin i love it as a makeup primer like i will literally just take a couple of drops and put it on even my dry skin before i put on my makeup it makes everything go on so much more smoothly but it's not so greasy that it causes anything to slide back off um, hey Nicole, so uh, I was just talking about rosehip seed oil. I talked, if you watched the recording of this, I talked about um, camellia oil and moringa oil, which are two of my favorites for, you know, repairing damage, for skin rejuvenation, but they're, I really think of them for more for dry skin, for deep moisturization, they're richer. Whereas rosehip seed oil has a ton of healing and repair benefits, but it's much, much lighter. I like it as a makeup primer. It's good for acne, oily skin. So those would be sort of like the, the dry skin, more like oily skin. I have dry skin. I use rosehip seed oil, but it's not my only moisturizer. I use it more as a makeup primer or as an ingredient in an oil blend because of the healing properties. Um, so that was uh, rosehip seed oil. And then I wanted to talk about, you guys, okay, one of my all time favorite oils. I try to use this every day on my face and my body, but only a tiny, 
tiny bit. It's called sea buckthorn oil, the miracle berry oil. Okay, you guys. So first of all, I got to warn you, when you go to buy sea buckthorn oil, you just buy a small bottle works just fine because you are going to be using the tiniest amount. And the reason you're going to use the tiniest amount is because this stuff is like the most bright orange color that you have ever seen. And it will stain your clothes and it will stain your skin. And it's, you only want to use such a small amount that you don't see the color coming through, even though it will tint. If you put it in a combination of oils, it will tint it like this amber, pale amber color. You don't want to use so much that it makes you look orange when you put it on. There's no need. It's so concentrated, but it is so regenerative and healing for damaged skin and so good for calming inflammation and sensitive skin like I think that for repairing or preventing sun damage like and keeping your skin healthy your skin cells like this is something you want to include it's so 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 good um, so it has regenerative and healing properties for damaged skin cells it helps to improve fine lines and wrinkles it accelerates scar healing it's very rich in omega sevens which is a little unusual it also has omegas threes and six and and they are in like the perfect ratio and omega nines and it has these omegas in like the perfect um, ratio so it's very very anti-inflammatory very good for protecting the skin and it also happens to be quite antibacterial as well so it's going to help fight off any little types of you know infections that are trying to settle into your skin or even like acne so i love including a tiny bit of sea buckthorn oil in any face or body oil blend and trying to get a little bit of it on my skin every day and you can absolutely using it on um, oily skin or like even with acne or repairing damage from acne scarring rosehip seed oil and sea buckthorn oil are both going to be really good for that kind of thing but again use a really small amount or you are going to look like an oompa loompa and that dates me a little bit too but if you guys are my age you'll know what i mean those bright orange guys in willy wonka and the chocolate factory <laughs> Um, Cheryl says, I love rosehip seed oil. I use, I have oily skin and I use it morning and night. I blend it with other oils or use it with tea tree. Yeah, Cheryl, right? So I feel like rosehip seed oil is one of the best oils if you have an oilier skin. If you have oily skin, sometimes you think, well, I don't want to put oil on my skin because my skin is oily. But if you don't put any oil or moisture on your skin, your skin gets this message that it needs to produce more oil. So it's actually really important to moisturize and even use oils on your skin, but to use the right ones. And rosehip seed oil is a really, really great choice. Um, and yeah, absolutely. The tea tree oil is going to be really helpful for any kind of infection, but also the sea buckthorn oil is particularly good for that. Um, bacterial infections and acne damage and you might want to consider putting just a couple of drops of that sea buckthorn berry oil into your rosehip seed oil um, you might find that it's really really uh, has benefit over time so another of the lighter oils that I wanted to talk about that is um, so it's 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 technically, I'm not sure if it's actually an oil. It's some kind of like liquid wax. It's kind of different than most oils and it has a very, very light feel to it is jojoba oil. Okay. So this has been a famous skincare oil for a long time. Um, it's not oily feeling at all. It can actually be broken down by water and it, it's very much like natural skin. And it's a, again, one that can be really, really good for oily skin is jojoba oil it's not gonna be too moisturizing so it is also very promoting of collagen and elastin regenerating collagen so it has some really nice skin repair and anti-aging benefits it's very rich in antioxidants which means it helps fight free radicals which are like the damaging skin destroying chemicals that are harming your skin cells it helps to neutralize those um, and it's also very high in vitamin e so it protects the skin from some of the effects of aging so it's really really good for any kind of skin it's known to be good and good for 
preventing fine lines, but it's really, really good for balancing oily skin. Though I have very dry skin and I always include it. It's good for dry skin, mature skin, wrinkles. So even though I have dry skin, I pretty much always include a little jojoba oil. It's famous for a reason. Um, and so another, I don't have too many more that I wanted to cover, but I did want to talk for a minute about argan oil. So I'll tell you guys, my biggest problem with argan oil is finding good quality argan oil. I've bought it a bunch of times and it's been like funny smelling or funny feeling. Like I think it just goes off kind of easily, but if you can find a really fresh, good quality argan oil, I mean, it is like a gold mine. It is good stuff. It's great for your hair. It's great for your skin. It's really good for sensitive skin, which I have. So for irritations, flare ups, you know, that kind of thing. Um, so it's very, very rich in antioxidants and it has very high concentrations of vitamin E and essential fatty acids. And it does have this incredibly luxurious texture that hydrates if your skin gets like flaky or if you want like a sort of immediate effect to soften wrinkles it's really good for that but it's actually also good for skin prone to acne it will not clog up your pores at all um and so that in oh and it can also be healing for a discoloration and damage to the skin from acne rosacea acne eczema, psoriasis, or sun damage. Um, and so it really, it's, it, and it can help with the dark spots and of aging as well. So, and it can even help to block future environmental damage from happening. So some people talk about it sort of like the all-in-one oil. You can, it's richly moisturizing for dry skin. You can use it on oily skin. It's very, very healing and regenerating. It is sort of like an all-in-one and, and it really does feel good on the spot, like the minute you put it on. I find that it's a little bit on the rich side. So even though they say it's good for acne prone skin, I would just see how it goes. Whereas with like the rosehip seed oil and the jojoba oil, I just feel like those are so light feeling. This one's a little richer feeling to me, more similar to the camellia oil, but it is more um, sort of versatile as well. Um, and like I said, the thing about argan oil is I find it's one of the hardest ones to find fresh, high quality oil. You'll know because it'll smell funny or just feel funny if it's not. And another one that I wanted to mention um, is... Uh, Oh, Cheryl says, I just got some sea bucks berry. I'm assuming a sea buckthorn berry, the bright orange one. I would love to know how you like that. I always include it in my face and body oils. The trick is just to use a little tiny bit at a time, but I really feel like it's so, it just feels almost magically good to include. Um, okay, I'm gonna get to the rest of these questions in just a second. Uh, d -d 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 -d. Oh yeah, another one I talk, wanted to talk about is a plant derived squalene oil. So I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is something that I found out about more recently and I don't have years and years of experience using, but so far my skin seems to really like it. I have very dry, sensitive skin. Um, and it seems to be an ingredient with a lot of potential, uh, to think about including in your skincare routine. So I just wanted to do a quick nod to that one. Um, and, and I just wanted to mention briefly, there are some other skins that are good to use like on your body. Like sometimes I'll use almond or sweet almond oil or a sesame oil. You know, they use a lot in Ayurvedic medicine and avocado oil can be a good one for that. It's for calming, for soothing. It's very rich in vitamin A, uh, which is vitamin D, cell growth, metabolism, it's antioxidant, um, essential fatty acids. So it's, it's revitalizing, hydrating, softening. It's just sort of a nice one that's also good for sensitive skin. Um, and it's good for like dry, dehydrated, mature skin. So it makes a really good body oil as well. So um, the way that I use the oils is I, like I said, I use the rose hip seed oil by itself as a makeup primer. Like if I go to put on my makeup and I didn't just moisturize in the last, you know, 20 minutes, I'll take a couple of drops of rose hip seed oil and just smooth them over my face. My makeup goes on so nicely over that, but it's not enough. It's not greasy enough that anything just slides right back off. I really, really love it for that. And then morning and night after cleansing my face, when my skin is still wet, I will put on an oil blend. And um, when I have the time, I'll make something up in a bottle and I'll put all the different oils in there and then I'll just put that on. 
and um, other times I don't even have time and I just take a little bit out of this bottle and that bottle and that bottle. I always love to use camellia oil because it's so good for my really dry skin. I love to use a rosehip seed oil, the jojoba oil, a drop of argan oil, and a tiny little touch of the sea buckthorn berry. And I'm not even that exact amount, you know, that careful about the amounts. And I just, you know, I just, I just put it on my skin, I press it into my skin, I massage it into my skin. And another thing you can do is you can even mix a little bit of water with your oil, or you can just have your skin be wet and put the oil on, and then you can even spray toner or pat a little bit more water and put the oil on again. It's actually, you need to have your skin wet or use water with the oils to get the best benefit. The oils are like carrying that moisture deep into your skin. So these oils are for moisturizing your skin on sort of like a deep level and really penetrating and sinking in and carrying the moisture and the water into your skin. So that's my routine is the rosehip seed oil as a makeup primer and the oils as a moisturizer when my skin is still wet and with water. But then there is another step that I wanted to talk about, which is not technically an oil, but because I have such dry skin, I will use a little bit of shea butter. But instead of mixing it in with the oils, which you can do, I prefer to put it on after, after all the oils and water and maybe layering a couple of different oils and toners or, or my sunscreen or whatever, I sometimes will take a tiny little bit of shea butter, warm it up between my hands and press that in over the top. And I especially like to do it on my arms and legs right after the, putting the oil on there. And sometimes the tiny, 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 tiniest bit of it on my face, it can get greasy if you put too much on. But what it does is it doesn't penetrate deeply to moisturize the deeper layers of your skin, but it seals the moisture in and it makes the moisturization that you've done last so much longer and it feels so soft and so good. So don't use too much or it'll be greasy. If your skin is still a tiny bit moist from being wet and putting the oils on, then that's going to help it to just kind of like not be greasy, but it really, really helps everything to last longer and it keeps it from drying out over the course of the day or the night or whatever. And of course you can rub extra into, you know, your elbows and your heels and stuff like that. So that's sort of my routine. I talk about the way that I do the routine in the blog that came out earlier this week, but today I wanted to talk about some of the, um, individual oils. And these, like I said, the ones I talked about today were mostly for the face where I kind of use more precious oils and I'm more careful. For the body, I often just have something simple and sort of less expensive in a big bottle and I just will go for sesame oil or almond oil. It can even be olive oil or coconut oil out of the kitchen, though I do like to kind of top it off with shea butter. Okay, so I ran through my favorite skincare oils and let me see if you guys have some questions. Um, Cheryl says, some see, very, oh, super dry cracked hands. So Maureen, there's two steps. One is preventing more moisture loss, right? One is like not stripping, not drying, n like sealing the holes in the bucket so that the healing can, can kind of continue progressively. Um, and so you're going to want to exfoliate. You can do that with some type of like, you know, like olive oil mixed with sugar or something like that. And then you're going to rinse that off and you're going to use the, the oils I was talking about today that are the most deeply moisturizing and healing, like the camellia oil or a blend that has some of those ones for really dry skin. And you're going to, you're going to put that on. You maybe spray with some toner, put another layer, as much oil and water as you can pack in there. And then you're going to rub the shea butter over the top. And the other thing is when you get a lot of cracks in your hands, sometimes there's actually little bits of infection or fungus or bacteria. So I would seriously consider putting some pretty serious essential oils into your oil or into the shea butter because that can be really, really healing as well. And I'm actually going to talk about essential oils for the skin in a future one, but you want to look into essential oils. You can use tea tree, you can use lavender, you can use frankincense. You can't go too wrong with those, but that could be a really, really important part. You might even want to soak your hands in, um, you know, some like Epsom salts with the oils in or put the oils on a little bit some of them you can even put on before the oils like so they have very very antifungal antibacterial 
properties and that might be an important part of the healing process as well that might be one of the reasons it's hard for your skin to moisturize and of course if you have dry skin that just doesn't respond to any type of external moisturization especially if it's all over your body and your face very often it just means your hormone levels are too low right your body isn't juicy on the inside it's just not producing you can only do so much from the outside so supporting your hormone levels and your watery essence we call it in chinese medicine from the inside out plumping and moisturizing from the inside out if you do that then your skincare is going to work if you don't do that it's like trying to re-moisturize a little raisin like it's it's not like a plum that was left out in the sun for a day like it's you know you've got to moisturize from the inside out by supporting your hormone levels during and after menopause that's what plumps your tissues from the inside out then you use a skincare and it, it like it has something to work with so but today i just wanted to talk about the skincare oils um Janine says she has a source for argan. Yeah, you just you see what's available locally, what you can get, and how it is when it arrives. Um, the hand washing and sanitizing. Yeah, so Maureen, definitely sanitizing is really tough. And not only that, but some of the chemicals used, you know, they break down the skin's natural barriers and they mess with the ecosystem of organisms that normally live on your skin. So I really like to use essential oils for hand sanitizing, but they're not necessarily like approved by the EPA, so it depends what situation you're in. But I often use just a few drops of a essential oil blend right on my skin as a hand sanitizer because they kill the bad viruses and bacteria without uh, killing all the good ones. Um, Yep, vitamin E oil can be very healing as well. A lot of the oils we talked about have a lot of vitamin E in them, but vitamin E oil by itself um, is something you can add as well. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so I had um, some, not, if anyone has non-skincare oil questions, you can keep asking those as well, but I also wanted to do just like a general Q&A about menopause and hormones and stuff. So Wendy says, my, tat, no, my naturopath wants me to get a hormone test, but it uses saliva instead of blood. She says it's more sensitive, but it's not covered my, by my insurance. I can get them through my health insurance, which is blood and would be covered. What are your thoughts? So, so Wendy, I can tell you that naturopaths and functional medicine doctors across the board are going to want to do saliva and urine tests because they're accurate, not just like a little bit more accurate, a whole different level of accurate. You will get information from the saliva test uh, that you will not get from the blood test. So if you can afford it and you wanna work with her on hormones or on her prescribing some type of hormone replacement, um, you know, if you're gonna go that route, then I think you need to do the right kind of testing to make sure that what you're taking is, is right for you. Um, when I work with women with herbal remedies, you don't have to do hormone testing. You can just kind of go by how you feel and what results you're feeling. But if you're gonna take any type of bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, then I think you need to be committed to doing the testing and repeating it and doing it on a regular basis and monitoring it regularly. Um, and it's going to be urine and saliva. It's not going to be blood tests. So yeah, you're going to have to go for it if that's your end goal. Um, yes, the, it's very different than the blood tests. Blood tests are like, they give you a very basic idea, but it's, it's completely different. Wendy said she's having memory loss. Yeah, so I read this um, thing, study. I, I try to you know, keep up on what's going on with modern medicine, mostly because it just tickles my fancy so much, the way that modern medicine keeps confirming exactly what uh, tr you know, Chinese medicine has been saying for like a few thousand years. Um, and so we say that if your, your yin jing, your watery essence, declines too low, that it, it, it's what supports your marrow, okay? Your, your, your marrow is like your spinal cord, your bone marrow, and it includes your brain. And your blood is even like a part of it. And when that is fully supported and replenished, right? your hair looks pretty, your brain is healthy, your, it's like it, it, it keeps your, it feeds your brain. When you have enough yin jing, it feeds your marrow and your brain is a part of your marrow. If your yin jing becomes very depleted, 
your marrow dries up and becomes undernourished. And so your brain is not getting the nourishment that it needs to function properly. That's in Chinese medicine. So, and yin jing, it tends to decline during menopause. It's the reason we get hot flashes. So in Western medicine, yin jing equates to your female hormone levels, your estrogen, your progesterone. And of course we know that these decline during and after menopause. But what I tell women is, yes, they're gonna decline. Yes, they're going to lower your estrogen and progesterone. They're not gonna be what they were when you were 23. They're gonna to go to your menopausal and postmenopausal levels. But there's a big difference between lower and zero. And that difference between postmenopausal low, but still supported and zero, that's where all your experience of aging depends on. <laughs> if they're at zero, you're gonna have all the aging problems. And if they're as high as they can be, just in a natural way, then you're gonna experience aging in a completely different way. And your yin jing and your female hormones and your marrow is gonna be so much more supported. And they actually did this study recently, I believe it with imaging, I think it was MRI imaging, where they were taking pictures of people's brains and they found that with women postmenopausally, if their hormone levels were like below like the really really low hormone levels like the zero not the postmenopausal normal but the zero that if your your hormone levels went below a certain point they could actually see that your brain shrunk and got smaller inside your head consistently that these lower hormone levels let your brain like shrunk so that's like a modern medicine confirming that yeah keeping those female hormone levels supported it's that it's even what makes your skin moist okay your watery essence your yin jing it feeds your blood keeps your hair healthy keeps your skin plump and it supports collagen it keeps your skin moist it's good for vaginal moisture it actually supports the collagen and tissues that hold your organs in place so it's good for helping prevent prolapse it keeps your joints lubricated helps prevent things like frozen shoulder and you know stiffness and in your muscles and um, it supports your marrow so it supports your spine your bone marrow helps feed your bones but it also supports your brain it keeps your brain juicy and plump and so um hair loss and memory loss and two years since your last period probably means that postmenopausally your hormone levels dipped lower than you want them to be that if you could bring them back up a bit you would feel better that some of these you know because plenty of women two years after their last period, you know, they still, they're not experiencing memory loss. Like that is something that we hope doesn't come on at all or doesn't come on till much, much later. So when these signs of aging are showing up earlier than we want or earlier than we think, then often the hormone levels are dropping too low too soon. Basically when they drop all the way to zero, you're at the end of your life when it comes to yi yin jing and Chinese medicine, right? So we wanna keep them as high as we can for as long as we can. Um, and, and Wendy, I also just want to mention that um, memory loss can be due to the decline of the yin jing and the low hormone levels and, and all that they've shown that. But if estrogen falls very suddenly, it can also get out of ratio with progesterone and testosterone and some of your other hormones. And your memory loss could be something like brain fog, which can happen not just because your hormones are too low, not just because your reserves are too depleted, but because things have gotten out of balance with each other. So that can cause a brain fog, which could feel like memory loss. So technically memory loss is a little bit different than brain fog, though they can feel really simple. So I'm just saying that either, because you know, two years after your last period, is when you're sort of like settling into your postmenopausal hormone levels and you want them to be not too low and you want them to have sort of settled and evened out in a place where they're all in a good ratio with each other. And so those are the two things that I mainly that I work on with women postmenopausally is did your hormones do, are they in a good ratio and are make sure none of them are falling too low. So it kind of could be either, um, though it's most likely to be a combination. If, if, uh, if the ratio is off, probably also one or more of them are low. Um, so it could be one or both of those issues. Yeah, it, well, it, coming and going is very, very 
normal. You know, it's not usually like, you know, you lose your whole memory all at once all the time. So kind of coming and going, it's, that's normal um, way for it to happen. Um, yeah. Yeah. But something's off, right? Something's a little bit off and it could certainly be related to hormones. It could be something else, but there's probably a good chance that it's related to hormones. Uh, all right. So somebody had asked what brand of oils to use. So, um, uh, it depends what you can find locally, what you can find from a really good supplier. It's half the issue is the quality of the oil and half the issue is that it's nice and fresh when you get it, that it hasn't been sitting in a shelf or a warehouse for too long. So I um, have an online program where I help women use herbs for Chinese medicine. And when they join, they get access to my online herbal pharmacies, which are these giant sort of suppliers used by um, alternative medicine practitioners, naturopaths, functional medicine doctors. So they have all the best quality, professional quality products, and they carry some brands that I really, really like of the um, you know, oils are, you know, a few different brands where you can get these different oils. They have some um, Ayurvedic oil blends and just individual ones, you know, just all different ones. And the thing that I like is not only do they have good quality brands, but when you get from a place like that, you know that it is fresh, that they keep, you know, they know how long it's been on the shelf. It's fresh, it's straight from the supplier, and it was shipped correctly from the supplier to them, that it was stored correctly, and that it was even, you know, shipped with a cold pack around it if it needed to be like it's not going to show up at your door stale or old or having been exposed to heat or tampered with in any way and that's a really big part of the oil quality part of it is the quality and part of it is how fresh it is so sometimes that just means buying from a really reputable source buying from a local source buying direct from the company as opposed to you know a place that sells lots of different types of things um, but you definitely want to look at the quality of the oils that you're using. It's going to make all the difference in the world. <laughs> um, okay. Does anybody else have any other questions? Um, yeah, hand sanitizing you guys, I feel like that's such a big issue these days. And I'm certainly not going to come out and tell you not to use hand sanitizer because you've got to look at the risks and the benefits. And right now it's really important that we use hand sanitizer but i will say this hand washing giving your hands a really good wash you can check with the epa on this but in my understanding it's as good or better than hand sanitizer so we don't always have access to hand washing facilities but when you do it can be used as an alternative to hand sanitizer and you don't necessarily need to use an antibacterial soap that has chemicals in it you just need to wash really 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 well um, moisturizing every time you wash your hands so every time your hands get wet putting a few drops of oil and or maybe oil and shea butter on there is going to help keep them from getting stripped um, and like I said, the alcohol and the chemical hand sanitizers are stripping to your skin and they damage the natural ecosystem in your skin. So if it's just me, myself, and I, I will use essential oils. I like to use the um, On Guard, doTERRA On Guard, Revive EO Protect or Young Living Thieves blend. I find that that, I feel like it's just like a, you know, antibacterial, antiviral powerhouse. Um, and so I'll just put a couple of drops of that right straight on my skin and I will rub it all over and then top it with some oil and some moisturizer. And I feel like that is antibacterial, um, but it's not like certified by the ETA. So we all have to make these decisions. We have to decide like what's okay and what's not. And it depends what situation you're in. If you're working in a hospital or a doctor's office or something, you know, then you just have to go with something that's been certified. But if it's just like me at home by myself and it's just for me, you know, my own personal decision, then at certain times I might choose to use something that I consider is not as damaging to my skin or to use hand washing or something like that. So yeah, they, they, it's just, it's a compromise that we need to make. And I can only say that you might want to consider, like I said, using essential oils to help 
because the natural ecosystem in your skin gets damaged, the organisms that live there normally that are beneficial to us, they have become depleted. Those populations have become depleted. So it leaves your skin vulnerable to invasion by more damaging organisms that could cause like a little infection or cause your skin to be dry and cracked and not heal. And using essential oils, even if you have to use a hand sanitizer also, using essential oils can help to get rid of any little infections that are trying to set in without doing more damage to the good stuff that likes to live on your skin. So you might want to consider using those in addition to moisturizing religiously and repeatedly <laughs> throughout the day. Um, every time your hands get wet, try to top it with some oil and then use that shea butter to prevent future moisture loss. And then you might want to do, like I said, some kind of a scrub with like oil and sugar or something like that. Um, you can grind up almonds really, 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 really fine. Like if you make almond milk in the Vitamix, you can massage your help with the pulp that's left over when you squeeze out your almond milk. That almond pulp is really, really good. Um, exfoliant that's like really really moisturizing for your skin it's really really nice it leaves your skin so smooth and you could even sleep like um, at night or for an hour in the evening you can put on like you know oils and waxes and all that and put like some cotton gloves on your hand to help hold it all in but um, there's this stuff that you called like Zim's crack cream that works for dry cracked skin and I'm not recommending it because it has chemicals in it But it's not a rich moisturizer It just helps to fight the infections that can cause certain kind of cracks in the fingertips. So that's why I recommend the essential oils um, All right Wendy says I bought your menopause class. How can I contact you after I get my saliva hormone test? Um, okay, so She's trying to get you to clean up your diet. Yeah, Wendy, so you can contact me. Um, I have to just double check, Wendy, which class you bought. If you bought my diet class, the login to that hasn't changed. So you can log in, you have lifetime access to that and access it absolutely anytime. Um, if you're in my Herbs for Menopause class, that has a new online home. And I sent out a lot of emails about the new login, but we can get you switched over at any time. Um, and then that has a very active uh, course community that you can join as well, that you can contact me through there. But I will tell you this, if you want your hormone test results interpreted, I am not the person for that. Um, you're going to want to talk to the, your naturopath, the person who's doing the testing about that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to help you in my program look at how you're feeling. You're having memory loss. You're two years post your last period. You're having hair loss. We're going to take all your symptoms and how you're feeling. We're going to look at your diet, your lifestyle, your herbs, your supplements, and we are going to create a wellness plan that addresses all your body systems and supports your systems on all these different levels with a tonic herbal program. And that you can do the hormone testing and you can take hormone replacement and you can do all the things that the naturopath is recommending in conjunction with this. But this is just sort of like eating at the right times. It's about getting the building blocks in that your body systems need to be functioning. It's just gonna be very, very supportive in an incredibly comprehensive way to help support you and change your experience of aging. It's not gonna be related to specific test results. Um, yeah, so Wendy, you, you just need to send me an email or I'll, I will look you up or if you, yeah, Wendy, make sure just to send me your email. Um, so I have your email address and then I can just look you up and I can resend the invitation. You really, really need to join the herbs program on the new platform. You need to create a login. You still have access to the course that won't cost you anything, but you need to log in to the new um, platform to be able to access your herbs course and there is now also a community and a VIP support membership that as an alum of the herbs program you can join at any time either one of those to get a lot of extra help and support so you've got lifetime access to the course and you can get into the community okay so I'm gonna just grab your email address here W a Greenslade and I will um, send you an email with the, uh, let me just write that down for myself. I'll just send you an email with the login information. W A Green 
with the login information for your herbs course um, on the new platform and all the information um, about the VIP support membership. And then I want you to log in and join us because it's so good, the new platform. You're going to love it. It's so easy to access everything there. Um, so you just, it's right there waiting for you. You just need to log in. Uh, Cheryl says, I wish insurance would cover alternative health care. Yeah, I know. Uh, our health care system is not based on wellness it's really you know it's like you know if i broke my arm and the bone was sticking out through the skin i would really want western medicine to fix it i would really want them to put it back in place and put a big old cast on it it's really 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 good for for stuff like that for certain types of problems but it's not wellness based there's more and more things appearing that are but they're not generally covered by insurance yet unfortunately our health and the thing that the insurance companies need to realize is that if we help people focus on wellness there will be so many less of these other health problems that they'll actually save money in the long run so it makes sense to me that eventually we will have a healthcare system that makes more sense but there are some factors trying to prevent it from changing and so in the meantime um, I would just encourage you to realize that investing in your wellness and your health, like if you don't have that, you don't have much. You can't rebuild your life. You can't do your work, best work. You're not going to be your most creative self. Like, you know, investing in your health is, it's everything. And so even if certain things aren't covered by insurance, it's going to make your life feel so much better. So that's what I have to say about that. Um... Yeah, Wendy says I can't take a lot of pharmaceuticals. Yeah, so that's the thing I love about the herbs is I have a lot of women in my herbs program who had side effects from pharmaceuticals or from bioidentical hormone replacement therapy and, and they were just like, well, I'm just going to suffer through whatever because I cannot take that stuff. That stuff does not agree with me. And even with the herbs, I have women who are very sensitive and they get side effects from the herbs that they take at first. And the thing is that when you're working with herbs, the side effects are more like messages from your body saying, okay, I can't take that one right now and here's why. And I work with them through a series of steps to find out which herbs their body does want right now. And we start building up their health and resilience. It's like we just need to find out where we can put an ore in to change the pattern that's happening and start building up their energy reserves, getting their energy circulating better and getting things detoxifying better. And we start small because if we can build you up to the next level of health, now you're gonna tolerate more herbs and we can build you up higher. And eventually you can tolerate all kinds of stuff without side effects because your system is healthier but with the herbs it's very possible to sort of find that way in and start changing the cycle and building things up and it's pretty exciting when that happens for people who know that they have that situation i would definitely recommend you know joining my herbal program and being a part of the vip support measure um, membership so i can work through that with you uh yeah, yeah, when you're sensitive like that, I, I'm like that. I used to be totally like that. I would take anything and I would just have crazy side effects. So I couldn't take anything, so I stayed feeling weak and sick. It was like a catch-22. And it was finally finding the right herbs that started to build up my body's ability to handle more and more and started to rebuild my health. And it's just it, it, when you reach a point where you're on this upward spiral and then things to improve tend to improve exponentially but you have to find a place to get started to calm down some of that what's causing you to react to things so strongly that you can't get the benefit from them um okay anybody have any other questions this is so fun i mean i love talking about herbs and and helping women with the most serious like dramatic debilitating menopause situations that you could imagine i really do it's my passion but um natural skincare you know sometimes you just have to have a little fun and you know just celebrate the whole situation of being in menopause too and so um, natural skincare is a little bit of a hobby of mine natural makeup there's so many great brands on the market now um, i'm actually just trying a new um some new uh, sunscreens that are totally all natural and some oil blends that I found. One of them has a little bit of squalene already included in it and they have absolutely zero ingredients that I wouldn't put in. So 
I'll report back inside my community and let you guys know how it goes. Um, and uh, in any case, it was great to see you all here today. And uh, all right, I just, and you know, Wendy, here's the thing. I would highly recommend staying with your naturopath, okay? I am not a primary care provider. Like, I can't order any tests. Like, that's, you know, I have a license to practice acupuncture and oral and mental medicine in the state of Oregon. Doesn't include ordering tests. So it's really important that you have a primary care provider and that you have a health care team working with you to check certain things at certain times and take care of certain things like broken bones or you know there's there's reasons to have a primary healthcare practitioner especially someone like a naturopath who agrees with alternative medicine who supports that you're also working on your diet and supplements and herbs but who can cover like you know you live near me you need to be on the right amount of vitamin d because we don't we, it's so dark here in the winter we don't make any vitamin d and for your hormones and your immune system and so many things your vitamin d you really want it to be in the optimal level but you're not going to know if that's the case without having it tested it's a very simple blood test but the thing is it's very easy not to take enough vitamin D, but you don't want to take too much because it is a vitamin that is toxic and can build up at toxic levels in your body if you take too much. So to know if you're taking enough, you need to get your levels tested at least a couple of times a year. So you need to have a primary healthcare practitioner like a naturopath. So don't think about leaving your naturopath. Just think about like including an herbal program and what all the wisdom that Chinese medicine has to offer for a supportive diet and lifestyle that help your herbs to work better, that is gonna give you adaptogenic support. It's gonna build up your energy reserves. It's gonna help with inflammation and detoxification. It's gonna help your body just do all the things that it wants to do better and more easily. So your naturopath will hopefully have less to do and less fires they're trying to put out, but you, you still wanna have them on your team for certain things that we're not gonna be able to address, like getting a blood test to check your vitamin D levels and other things like that. You know, this is, I feel like, what I do with the herbs and the supportive diet and lifestyle, it can completely change your experience of menopause and aging. Without it, it can just be like running around trying to put out fires and feeling like life just isn't that fun anymore. But there are certain things that your other parts of your healthcare team do that we do not do and cannot do. And so you really want to have both. Okay. Uh, Okay, yeah, yeah. So if as long as you have a primary healthcare practitioner that you can talk to, who listens to you, who you respect, you know, that's great. Um, yeah, so you the trick is to find someone that you actually like, right? That you feel like is kind of on the same page with you about understanding the types of decisions that you want to make putting together your wellness plan for your life and what's it, what it's going to include from alternative medicine and traditional medicine. Like sometimes we just end up with somebody from our insurance that does certain things for us, but that we don't talk to that much. But if you can find somebody that's primary care, that's also more on board with some of the other things you want to do, that's even better. But, you know, sometimes we make do with what we've got, but just you know, just, I'm just saying that you, you want to have somebody, people like that on your healthcare team as well. Yeah. A Western medicine doctor who listens to you. Exactly. Good. That's, that's all I wanted to hear is that you have somebody like that on your team as well as what we do. That's perfect. Okay. So if you guys are watching the replay of this and you have follow-up questions, you can send me a message. You can send me an email. You can tag me in the comments below or tag me in my Facebook group or something like that. And if you want to know more about working with me in my herbal program, then you want to go to danalavoislac.com um, .com forward slash. I'll put it in the comments. You want to watch my free... Um, hour-long online training about how I use herbs and why it's so different from how most people use herbs. Um, and check it out because there's just a ton of information there and it'll tell you all about my online program 
as well. Uh, okay, so that is what I wanted to share with you today. Uh, I will be back in a couple of weeks. I've got, um, I went off on kind of a binge around Valentine's Day with makeup and skincare. So I'm actually going to be talking about um, in a couple of weeks facial cupping and gua sha, which I'm excited about. And we're going to talk a little bit about essential oils for skincare as well. So that's all up and coming. And in the meantime, um, contact me if you have any questions. Thank you so much for being here with me live today. That is so fun for me. Uh, and I will see you guys soon. All right. Bye-bye. Have a great rest of your weekend.